XUnit is a powerful unit testing framework that we have available to us in .NET, and personally, it's one of my favorites. But XUnit has always had something a little bit weird about it that I haven't really liked, and I wish I knew about this feature sooner. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. When it comes to writing tests in XUnit, and in particular when we're working with theories, which are parameterized tests in XUnit, the types that we pass into the test versus where we're generating the test data from, they don't have to match up. It's kind of weird. We have to deal with the object type, the base type in C Sharp. So in this video, we're going to look at theory data as a solution to that. So if that sounds interesting, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. And that said, we'll jump over to Visual Studio, we'll look at a very simple example and walk through theory data. On my screen, I have a very simple parameterized test here. You can see that it's add valid inputs and then it's looking for the expected value. And really, it's very simple, right? We're going to create an adder. As you might expect, if I scroll down a little bit lower, the adder is just going to add two numbers together. The system under test is not really important here. We're going to be looking at the data that we're passing around and how to leverage X unit. So if we look back up at the theory, so in particular from line nine to 13, you can see that I am marking the test method as theory, and then I have the parameters passed into it. So just the first number, the second number, and then the expected result that when we add these two things together, that's what we're testing for. You'll also notice that I've marked this one up with member data, and then I have to give it the name of the member of this class that has the test data on it. So this is the traditional way that we usually do this. This is what we've had available to us in the past. When I started using XUnit, this is really what I started using, and I've kind of just stuck to it because that's the way we've always done it, right? So if you look closely, what's kind of gross about using this is that this is going to be a generator. It's going to yield back the sets of data that we're working with, and you'll notice that the type is an object array. So that means that I'm going to create an object array here. There's literally nothing stopping me from putting a string in here. This compiles. If we were to go run this, this would totally break now because when it goes to pass this around at runtime, it can't put this string into this first parameter. So we lose all of the type safety. That's kind of crappy because we're working with a language that is really good at this, right? This is what I've been used to doing. And if we go run these right now, because all of the types are right, if I go press play, run them all, not super exciting, but we're going to get a green light on all of them, right? So this does work. Uh, the math, you can trust me on it, right? You just saw the test pass. It's not really the important part, but I just wanted to have a set of data that we can work with. This is one way that you can do this with the member data. You can also use class data and really define a whole separate class that has the test data in it. That's actually very handy for reusability for different scenarios to work through. A lot of the time in my personal projects, I find that member data just works conveniently. Then I have the test data right around the test that I'm running. Lots of different ways to do it, but this is the traditional way that we've had to work with. So we're going to look at the first variation of this. And in fact, we're going to jump over to using class data. So I'm going to swap this out and I'm going to put class data on here, but we don't have the calculator test data yet. So let's go look at that. This is just a brief interruption to remind you that I do have courses available on Dome Train focused on C Sharp. So whether you're interested in getting started in C Sharp, looking for a little bit more of an intermediate course focused on object oriented programming and some async programming, or are you just looking to update your refactoring skills and see some examples that we can walk through together, you can go ahead and check them out by visiting the links in the description and the comment below. Thanks and back to the video. Okay, so we're going to look at the first example of theory data, which is going to be the base class for our calculator test data. You'll notice this theory data takes in these parameters, right? These type parameters at the end. And if you think about what we were doing back up at this set of data up here, right? If I do a little bit of block select and we look at these, these are just three integers. And that's exactly what I have down here on line 76. So this theory data is going to take three integers, one for the first number to add, one for the second number to add, and the third parameter is the result. And if we have a close look inside, when we go to create this calculator test data inside the constructor, we just call this built-in add method, not to be confused with the system under tests add method. This is going to add this information into the theory data. Sorry for the confusing naming in this example, but this is adding it to the theory data. So we're just building up that collection. 
Now, I've just put in the same set of test data here, right? So what I've highlighted here from line 80 to 84 is the same as from line 22 to 26. Same data. Now, what I've done, if I go back up here, is that I've just made this the class data, right? So it's not member data, it's class data now. And that way, when we're defining this stuff, it has to adhere to the same types that we have right here. I'm going to go run this one. It'll pass, um, hopefully, unless I've totally butchered something, but we'll see that we get a green light, and that means that these tests pass. So we are using theory data, but there are some things that we might want to consider, especially when we're comparing to this base case. While this is helpful for having us make sure that this part has type safety, this doesn't give us full type safety. So I'm going to explain in just a moment here one of the problems that we still run into, right? So we have three integers up here. I've made this three integers, but what would happen if we said instead we're going to make this a string, right? So just to quickly comment this part out, and if I go ahead and let Copilot come up with something, come on, Copilot, not being helpful, okay. So if we put a string and then two other numbers here, this compiles, right? We're meeting this requirement here because a string and then two numbers, just like we see. This part up here is not doing the check. So in fact, I can go run this. It does compile. And when I run it, we'll see that we get one failing and it's going to say that a string cannot be converted to an integer. So we do get the protection that when we're defining these, we get the right type matching, but when we go to pass this into the test still, it's not going to match. We're going to come back to this later in the video. I just wanted to show you that we're only part way there, but in my opinion, this is still a nice little improvement because that means that we can't mess it up when we're declaring the test data at a minimum. So small improvement, but we can do better still. So let's go ahead and move on to member data. Okay, now I'm going to comment out the original member data that we had in here. I put this member data attribute back onto the test method, and I've added in this adder test data, but this one is a little bit different. If we compare what we have, it's still going to be public static. It's still going to have the same name, but you can call it whatever you want. But you'll notice that this one was a method, and this one is a getter property. So on this getter property, you'll also notice the return type is theory data, just like we saw with the class data below, right? In that example, we had three integers, we have the same thing here, and I'm just declaring theory data. And then I'm populating that theory data with our different scenarios that we want to work with. It's almost exactly like the class data in terms of how it's set up. We make a new instance of theory data, we populate it, and then we have it basically call from up here. That's how we can use the name of um, call here and get the same name of the property. So when we go run this, XUnit knows to go look for this property and this theory data can get passed in. If I go run this, so you might expect it will pass. Hopefully the numbers and the math all check out. So we get five tests passing. There's our green light. Now that we've seen the green light for the member data and we had the thing that we had to go explore with the class data, right? When we change the types, let's go see what happens when we do the same thing here, right? So we do get the protection inside here that I can't just go ahead and make this one a string, right? We get the type safety within here. That's great. But what happens when we go do the same thing that we did with the class theory data? So if I go make this a string and then I go make this a string, this all compiles, but wait a second, this actually doesn't compile now. So this is giving us more type safety. If we hover over this, it says the type argument string from adder test data is not compatible. It knows. It's able to infer that this type parameter was changed and it's not compatible. In the first example we looked at with the theory data, it didn't matter. We ended up getting to run it. It compiled totally fine. And when we ran it, it failed. So, so far, it looks like the member theory data does have an advantage over the class theory data. So I just wanted to call that out that that is a difference between these two, even though they look very similar. And it might have just seemed like the difference was putting it into a class versus putting it into a property. But there is some slight difference in the behavior. And we do get better type safety. So I think that's pretty cool. It kind of works in my favor because I do like using the member data over other dedicated class data. But there's one more evolution of this that I want to look at that I prefer even more.
All right, this is the final evolution of the theory data that we're going to look at. So if we compare these together, it's just a little bit different. And you'll notice that instead of having three tight parameters, if you go back to the, the working case, it was three integers, right? We're adding three or we're adding two numbers together and having the return value. But this one, you'll see it's just one tight parameter. So what I've done is I've made a record down here. So this is just a class and it has three inputs on it. So the two numbers that we're adding together and then the result. What I like to do is I like calling these test scenarios. So this is going to be the adder test scenario. You can call them whatever you want. That's the naming convention that I like to use. And then we go make the theory data the same way. When we create the theory data, we're creating this collection here, and then I'm just making individual little scenarios here. The nice thing about using a record here is that we do get that two string characteristic of records, which is really great when we go to look in the test explorer and we can see the parameters being passed in because it will go two string your inputs. So we get that. That's really nice. But what's really cool about this is if we go back up here, if you have tests where you have a lot of parameters being passed in for whatever reason, we can collapse that back down to one now. So we don't have three things that get passed in. We have adder test scenario, and we could call it scenario. And then what I would do is scenario dot number one, number two, and then we can get the result off of the scenario. So I personally like doing this because I don't have to worry about a bunch of different parameters being passed in. It's just one. I like personally just having records and having the two string ability in the test explorer. Yes, if you're just using primitive types in the previous example we saw, those will of course two string as well. But there's something in my opinion about just having these organized in a nice way. If you have more complicated scenarios, you could be using uh, this type of syntax where you name the parameters. And when you're looking through your test data, it could make things just a lot more clear. So Personally, I like having the records to work with, in my opinion, a slight advantage or slight improvement over the previous example, but you might find, hey, look, it's overkill for me. Uh, in this example, right, it's just adding a couple of numbers. I don't want to go through the overhead of having a whole dedicated type for it. But in my opinion, it's a little bit more clean. I don't like using the word, but uh, this is my personal preference for this kind of thing. And if we go run this, we will see that we get a green light again. So there we go, all of our tests pass, and that's going to be theory data in X unit. So to recap on what we saw, the original theory data is not really type safe because it's going to be using an object array coming out of an iterator. Kind of sucks, but it works, right? This is what I've been personally using for years and years. What we saw next was using class theory data. So if I go all the way down here, we made this dedicated class. It inherits from theory data with the parameters that we want. We do want integers in this case, right? From there, we ended up seeing that we could go over to member theory data with a very similar structure. This one had a slight advantage that we do get more type safety than the class theory data. And then the final example we saw was using a record like this just to minimize the number of parameters. And in my opinion, organize your scenarios a little bit more elegantly inside of your test data. So I hope you found that helpful and it will get you to structure your tests in a way that's a little bit more readable and a little bit more maintainable. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.